Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to video number 9 in our IC7100 from A to Z series. This time we're going to cover part 3 and the final segment on the standard memories. There's just a few things left that we need to cover, so let's get right to it. As you can probably tell from the background in the video, and also from the not quite normal audio quality, I'm not in my normal recording location. The radio is back in the truck. I've been doing some traveling with family, been at my in-laws in upstate New York here for a couple of weeks, so I thought we would try to finish up the memory segment uh, from in the truck. There's only a few things left to cover on memory. One of the things that I haven't talked about yet is MCL, which is memory clear. It's pretty straightforward. Um, let's go to, let's say, memory three. So in the B channels here, I've got some two meter frequencies. Let's say I really don't want this 20 meter frequency here. Um, you go to the sub menu on menu three. So again, we've got three menus here just as a refresher. And the third menu is has a button called Memo, and if I touch that, that puts me into the Memory submenu. And the fourth touchscreen button is M-CL, which is Memory Clear. If I just press and hold that, we get the double beep, and now Memory B3 says blank, and you'll see the screen went blank. So I have... Channels 1, 2, nothing in 3, and 4. Pretty simple. The other item that's on the memory submenu is this little select item. And select allows you to mark a memory as a selected memory. And it's pretty straightforward. If I touch it, you'll see a little star shows up over here next to the B. And if I touch it again, the star goes away. Works that way on every memory. So you can make a memory a selected memory by just pressing that button. And what that does for you is when you go to scanning, and we'll cover memory scanning in a separate video. So let's say I want to select memory one, um, memory two, and memory four. And then let's assume I have a bunch of other memories programmed, but I only want to scan these three. When you're doing memory scans, there's an option to scan only selected memories. So you can have it scan only memories with a star. The, uh, and, and actually, I didn't, you can't actually use select for a blank memory. And when you're doing memory scans, again, we'll cover that in more detail it automatically skips blank memories for you. So that's memory select. Now one other thing that I mentioned I would show you is when you're mobile, which the rig is right now, one of the problems with memories is as I rotate the memory select knob here to select the different channels, it puts the memory in, but if I accidentally bump the tuning knob, which is, you know, if you're reaching for something is fairly easy to do, you'll see my memory has totally been screwed up here. But if I just rotate off and back to the channel, it goes back to what was programmed there. And I mentioned I would show you a couple of tricks to help prevent that. One of those is the tension adjustment, which is this little tab on the right side of the knob here. So with it all the way down, the knob is very loose and, and spins very freely. There are three tension selections, so we have lighter, basically none. If I push the tab up one notch, the knob is a little bit stiffer. If I push it up another notch, it's even stiffer still. But if I push it all the way up to the top setting, it actually makes it now so that the knob has click stops. So now you probably can't, I don't know if you can see this very well from the video, but it's very easy for me to tune five kilohertz at a time because it actually has a click stop for each position on the encoder. And in the click stop position, let me go back to my memory, it's at least, you know, if I just sort of tap it um, accidentally, I'm not gonna change the frequency. You have to be a little bit more deliberate about changing anything 
with it all the way up to the click stop position whereas down here you know it's even if I just touch it I've gone you know 20 30 kilohertz here so that's one way to help make your memories a little bit less prone to being messed up while you're driving and then a second way that you can do it is the top right button here says speech and there's a little key like implying a lock on there and if you press and hold that it turns on the dial lock you'll see the little key here and now the tuning knob doesn't do anything to change the frequencies the memory knob still works so you can still change memory channels and you can uh, well I don't have any uh, on repeaters that I have tone squelch, you're not going to hear anything. Um, volume and squelch still work, and memory select still work, but the tuning knob does not work, so it locks the dial. There is a setting option to have that lock everything, but I have it set just to lock tuning right now. So that's another way to keep yourself from messing up your memory selections when you're mobile. And that's really it for the basic memory functions. There are some other memory options that are specific to D-Star, and I'm going to do a whole separate set of videos on D-Star because that can get pretty complicated. But this pretty much covers the memory basics. One other video that I will be adding is a way to manage your memories from a PC. There's some software packages out there to do that, and we'll cover that in another segment and that makes it much easier than programming everything by hand but i think this is it for the basics of memories well that wraps up standard memory operation as mentioned in the segment there are some additional memory settings specific to d-star those will be covered in upcoming videos on d-star operation Separate from the standard memories, the IC7100 has scratch pad memories called memo pads. We'll cover those in a separate video as well. And I'm also planning a video on PC software that gives you a much easier way to program and manage all the memories in the radio. You can find a companion website for this channel at a to z.tech. You'll find a link to the website in the description for this video. The description also has a list of the manual pages that were covered. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, I'd appreciate a click on the like button. If you're finding the whole channel useful, please consider clicking on the subscribe button. You can also click on the little bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured smoke.